The process of formation of egg or ovum in female is called oogenesis. In the word oogenesis, the part o refers to egg and genesis refers to generation. So the generation of egg is oogenesis. Similar to oogenesis, a process called spermatogenesis is present in males. And with the help of this spermatogenesis process, inside male, sperm formation takes place. However, spermatogenesis process starts once the boy hits puberty. That is only after a boy reaches puberty that the process of spermatogenesis or process of sperm formation starts. However, the same is not true for oogenesis. It is partially true but not completely true because the process of egg formation or oogenesis starts even before birth. That is even inside female fetus, inside female fetus, the process of oogenesis is going on. So that is why while studying oogenesis, we study it under two different parts. The part taking place before birth and the part taking place after birth. Because oogenesis process starts before birth, it halts or stops during birth and again resumes after the girl hits puberty. That is why we are going to divide the topic of oogenesis under two parts. First, prenatal oogenesis or oogenesis before birth, pre-birth and postnatal oogenesis. That is oogenesis after birth, post-birth. First, let's deal with prenatal oogenesis or the process of formation of egg before birth. This is the beginning of a new story, the beginning of the story of formation of egg. So I want you to listen to each and every sentence that I say very closely because each and every sentence they matter. Now let's begin the story. What you see here is a female fetus. The female fetus is attached with the wall of the uterus of the pregnant mother. Along with the female fetus, you can also see the yolk sac that is in connection with the fetus. Now, here's the beginning. During the fourth week of fetal development, fourth week, during the fourth week of the development of the fetus, we can see few spatial cells present on the wall of the yolk sac. And these spatial cells, they are the primordial germ cells. They are the primordial germ cells. Germ cells are the cells that are responsible for the formation of gamete. In this case, the germ cells present on the wall of the yolk sac are responsible for the formation of egg. But along with germ cell, the word primordial is attached. The reason is this primordial germ cell gives rise to other germ cells that go through the process of oogenesis. However, these germ cells that are present at the very beginning, they basically form the primitive germ cell or the germ cell of the beginning. That's why called primordial germ cell. Once the primordial germ cell appear on the wall of the yolk sac of the female fetus during the fourth week of fetal development, they number one, proliferate. Proliferate. Proliferation refers to increasing its number. Basically, primordial germ cell, they increase their number by mitosis. Meiosis is not going to take place right now. The number of genetic, uh, the number of chromosome and the amount of genetic matter remains the same. Okay, so they proliferate or increase their number. At the same time, they migrate. By migrate, I mean these primordial germ cell after increasing their number, they enter or travel inside the female fetus. And where do they go inside the female fetus? They enter the gonad, that is the ovary of the female fetus. So during the fourth week of fetal development, primordial germ cells appear on the wall of the yolk sac of female fetus, where they proliferate or increase their number and finally migrate inside the fetus. Where inside the fetus? Inside the ovary of the fetus. Now let's look at the ovary of the fetus. 
this right here is the ovary of a female fetus. And as you can see from the diagram, the wall of the ovary is lined by simple cuboidal epithelium. Why is it called simple cuboidal epithelium? Because the type of cells present are cube-like and they are arranged in one single layer. That's why simple cuboidal epithelium. However, that's not important. The important thing is this simple cuboidal epithelium lining the wall of the ovary is actually modified. Why are they modified? They are modified to form gamete or this simple cuboidal epithelium contain germ cells that are responsible for the formation of gamete egg. And since this simple cuboidal epithelium contains germ cells, it's also called germinal epithelium. So the wall of the ovary is lined by germinal epithelium. Germinal epithelium contains germ cells. What are these germ cells? These germ cells are the same germ cells that migrated inside the fetus during fourth week of fetal development. That is the primordial germ cells. Among the many primordial germ cells lining the wall of the ovary, I'm going to select one. So here's the primordial germ cell that I have selected, which is obviously diploid. Because that's a typical cell found in human body. A typical cell found in human body is diploid. It's only the gametes that are haploid. All other cells, they are diploid. Okay. So this diploid cell present at the very beginning, which is responsible for the process of oogenesis, is the primordial germ cell in short PGC. First things first. The primordial germ cell increases its number or multiplies and forms many other germ cells. So all these diploid cells that you can see here, all these cells are germ cells and all these germ cells are formed from the primordial germ cell. Since the number of chromosome has not changed during the cell division of the primordial germ cell. So the type of cell division taking place here is mitosis. So by the process of mitosis, PGC multiplies and forms other germ cells. These other germ cells, they further multiply by the process of mitosis and further increase their number. At the end, a lot of, a lot of germ cells are formed from primordial germ cell. And all these germ cells are formed from primordial germ cell by the process of mitosis. Why? Because the number of chromosomes still remains the same. Because the cells are deployed same as that of primordial germ cell. All these germ cells that are formed by the division of primordial germ cell have been given the name Oogonia. O refers to egg. Gunia refers to offspring. Basically, the offspring of these cells are going to be egg. And that's exactly why these are germ cells. Next step. Among the many Ugonia formed from primordial germ cell, few degenerate. And only the remaining Ugonia enter the next phase. The remaining Ugonia get surrounded by a layer of flat epithelial cells, which are also called follicular cells. So inside here is the Ugonia and the outer wall, which is made up of flat epithelium is the follicular cell, follicular cells. So individual Ugonia, they get surrounded by flat follicular cells from outside. This Ugonia now enters the next phase called growth phase where it basically grows the Ugonia intakes as much nutrition as possible and grows in size. After growing in size, it's called primary oocyte. And it is the primary oocyte that is responsible for the formation of gamete by the process of meiosis. This primary oocyte is surrounded by follicular cells, the same flat follicular cells. The primary oocyte along with the flat follicular cell is called primordial primordial follicle 
not to be confused with primordial zombie cell let me revise the whole thing for you okay at first there's the diploid primordial zombie cell this diploid primordial zombie cell gives rise to other diploid zombie cells by the process of mitosis these other diploid zombie cells they further multiply by the cell division of mitosis and further increase their number the zombie cells that are formed by the process of mitosis from primordial zombie cell are called oogonia not all oogonia survive few of them degenerate the remaining oogonia get surrounded by a wall of flat epithelial cells also called follicular cells these flat epithelial cells or follicular cells are derived from the ovary itself from the wall of the ovary and the stromal content that is the middle content of the ovary inside here is the oogonium which is the singular for oogonia inside here is the diploid oogonium which is surrounded by the flat follicular cells the oogonium intakes as much nutrition as possible and grows in size basically prepares itself for the process of meiosis so the oogonium feeds and increases in size after it increases in size it is no longer called oogonium it is called primary oocyte that is it is the primary cell that is going to enter the process of meiosis to form a so called primary oocyte the primary oocyte is still it's still surrounded by the flat follicular cells the primary oocyte along with the flat follicular cells surrounding it is called primordial follicle so this is primordial follicle this is primordial zone cell primordial follicle contains primary oocyte number 1 surrounded by flat follicular cells number 2 what's the next step next step is for primary oocyte to enter meiosis why here's the reason the aim of the zome cell is to form egg and egg is a gamete and gametes are haploid that is they contain half the number of chromosome however primary oocyte is diploid that is they contain two sets of chromosome for primary oocyte which is diploid to form an egg which is haploid it has to go through such a process that is going to half the number of chromosome present inside the oocyte and the process that is responsible for halving <laughs> is that is that a word halving i don't know to half the number of chromosome present inside the cell is meiosis dude here's a diploid cell this diploid cell needs to form a haploid cell basically the number of chromosome has to half and then what does it go through it goes through the process of meiosis and meiosis has two parts there's meiosis 1 and then there's meiosis 2 so first first primary oocyte enters meiosis 1 however here's the thing here's the thing here's the thing after primary oocyte enters meiosis 1 it gets arrested that is it stops its cell division in meiosis 1 in meiosis 1 there are various phases prophase 1 metaphase 1 anaphase 1 telophase 1 within prophase 1 as well there are various stages among them there's a stage called diploidin during the during the diploidin stage of prophase 1 of meiosis 1 the primary oocyte stops its cell division basically it becomes inactive automatically so here's the thing there's the fetus and fetus is forming egg however the mother of the fetus is disappointed with the fact that her small tiny fetus female fetus is making egg and she is angry dude you are not old enough to be making egg stop that immediately otherwise you are grounded forever shit and then the fetus is like oh i'm sorry mom no 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 i'll stop it immediately so basically the fetus stops or pauses the game of oogenesis during this particular step of oogenesis and 
all the primordial follicles that are formed inside the ovary they become arrested or inactive during which stage during diplotium stage of prophase 1 of meiosis 1 so all the primordial follicles they become inactive or arrested now there are millions and I mean millions of primordial follicles that are formed inside the ovary of the female fetus. However, the female fetus, the primordial follicles, not any follicle, the primordial follicles that are present inside the ovary are continuously degenerating. The number of primordial follicles, it continuously decreases. Before birth, it's present in like millions. After birth, it decreases to like few hundred thousands. And by the time the girl reaches puberty, the number of primordial follicle decreases to around 40,000. What did I say? So before birth, the number of primordial follicle present inside the ovary is like in millions. After birth, it drops down to around few hundred thousands few hundred thousands and by the time the girl hits puberty the number of primordial follicle it decreases to somewhere around 40k or 40,000 so it is these 40,000 primordial follicles remaining that then resume the process of oogenesis once the girl hits puberty and that you are going to learn under the topic of postnatal oogenesis at the end of prenatal oogenesis millions of primordial follicles are formed among all the oogonia few of them get degenerated and the remaining all get converted to primordial follicle so basically there remains no oogonia so there are no oogonia to enter the process of oogenesis. All there's left are millions of primordial follicles that are formed during the fetal stage of the development of the girl. And these millions of primordial follicle, what do they contain? They contain primary oocyte. And what is primary oocyte supposed to do? Primary oocyte is supposed to divide meiotically and form the egg. However, all the primary oocyte present inside all the primordial follicles get arrested or their process pauses during the diplotin phase of prophase of meiosis 1 up, in, up until when until the girl hits puberty so before birth inside ovaries there are millions of primordial follicles by the time girl reaches puberty or hits puberty, a lot of them degenerate. And by a lot, I mean a lot of them. To a point that the number of primordial follicles, they decrease down to just few tens of thousands. It is around 40,000 primordial follicles that remain by the time a girl hits puberty. That's how large number of primordial follicles they degenerate during the development of a girl. So before birth, millions of primordial follicles. By the time a girl reaches puberty, only 40,000 primordial follicles. And it is after a girl reaches puberty that hormonal development takes place. And these hormones, they allow the development of the follicle or they start the development of the follicle. Again, mind my word, it's the development of the follicle not yet the development of the oocyte present inside the follicle. Let's look at the process in detail. So this is the ovary of a girl who has hit puberty. Inside this ovary, I have drawn different types of follicles. Inside this ovary, the formation of secondary oocyte from the primary oocyte takes place. And this whole process through which the formation of egg takes place egg comes out of the ovary and finally the wall covering of the egg degenerates this whole cycle which takes place inside the ovary is called ovarian cycle and this ovarian cycle is divided into three phases number one where the follicle goes through various stages and takes various forms called follicular phase 
Finally, when the secondary oocyte comes out of the follicle and out of the ovary into the fallopian tube called ovulation. And number three, where the outer wall surrounding the secondary oocyte degenerates called luteal phase. However, right now to understand the process of oogenesis, we are only going to look at the follicular phase of ovarian cycle. If you understand the follicular phase right now itself, it will be much easier for you to understand menstrual cycle because it is the menstrual cycle where you will be understanding the various activities of different types of hormones on these processes. For now, I'm just going to explain the various stages of the follicular phase. So this right here till ovulation is the follicular phase which contains various stages that so various types of follicles. Initially at the very beginning of puberty what are there in the ovaries there are lots and lots of around 40,000 primordial follicles. This is the number one you have the primordial follicle. What does primordial follicle contain? It contains primary oocyte and this primary oocyte is covered from outside by flat follicular cells. By flat follicular cells. Okay. Now this primordial follicle goes through follicular phase where it passes through various stages till the formation of secondary oocyte and the ovulation of secondary oocyte take place. What are the various stages? First, there's the primordial follicle that were formed before birth, which contains the primary oocyte, which is arrested in the meiotic two division, sorry, meiosis one division. Now, the wall covering the primary oocyte contains flat follicular cells in primordial follicle. These flat follicular cells, they change their shape and become cuboidal. So they are no longer flat follicular cells. They are cuboidal follicular cells. The oocyte that it surrounds is still primary oocyte. And this follicle right here is called number two is called primary follicle. So the primordial follicle contains primary oocyte surrounded by flat follicular cells while the primary follicle contains the primary oocyte surrounded by cuboidal follicular cells. Now the cells of this cuboidal layer divide or multiply and form multiple layers. After forming multiple layers the cells are no longer called follicular cells. Why? The cells of this layer are called follicular cells because this layer or membrane is the follicular membrane. The cells of this layer are called follicular cells called cause this membrane is the follicular membrane. However, the follicle, this follicle formed after primary follicle contains a membrane surrounding the primary oocyte, which is not the follicular membrane. This membrane is called granulosa membrane. Since the membrane surrounding the primary oocyte is called granulosa membrane, the cells contained in the granulosa membrane are called granulosa cells. So what we have here surrounding the primary oocyte, still there's primary oocyte. This is your primary oocyte. Still there's primary oocyte. So this membrane covering the primary oocyte from outside is granulosa membrane and it is made up of stratified cuboidal granulosa cells. See, there are your cuboidal cells which are arranged in multiple layers, so called stratified, which comes from the word strata or layer. So these cuboidal granulosa cells are arranged in multiple layers, so-called stratified cuboidal granulosa cells, which is a part of granulosa membrane, which is covering primary oocyte. But along with these two content, you can see one more layer. And that is this red layer, which I have drawn here in between the primary oocyte 
and the granulosa membrane. This red layer is actually made up of glycoprotein. So what is this red layer made up of? It's made up of glycoprotein. And what, who secretes this glycoprotein? The glycoprotein surrounding the primary oocyte or present like jam between the granulosa and, and the primary oocyte is secreted by both primary oocyte outward and the granulosa membrane inward. What did I say? So here's your follicle which contains primary oocyte. The primary oocyte secretes glycoprotein outside and the membrane covering the gly uh, sorry the membrane covering the primary oocyte called granulosa membrane also secrete glycoprotein inside the primary oocyte secretes glycoprotein outside and the granulosa membrane secretes glycoprotein inside and the glycoprotein secreted by both these content that is primary oocyte and the granulosa membrane form a single layer which is present like jam between the primary oocyte and the granulosa membrane. And this layer of glycoprotein which is present between primary oocyte and granulosa membrane is called, this zone is called zona pellucida. From here onwards in each and every follicle you can see zona pellucida. This is zona pellucida right outside the uh, oocyte. This is zona pellucida right outside the oocyte. Here's zona pellucida right outside the oocyte. Here's zona pellucida right outside the oocyte. Here's zona pellucida right outside the ovum. I explained a lot about this follicle, but what's the name of this follicle? This is your number three. That is the maturing primary follicle. It's called a maturing primary follicle because it is through this follicle that primary follicle finally matures into, finally matures into what we call a secondary follicle. So it is kind of like an intermediate uh, stage for follicular development from primary follicle to secondary follicle. So again, at the very beginning, there's your primordial follicle which contains primary oocyte surrounded by flat follicular cells. This primordial follicle develops into primary follicle which still contains primary oocyte, however, covered by cuboidal follicular cells where the cells are not flat, instead they are cube-like. Cube Finally, the primordial follicle starts maturing. The maturing primordial follicle contains the primary oocyte surrounded by multiple layers of granulosa cells where the cells are cube-like in structure, so-called stratified cuboidal granulosa cells. All these cells, they form a membrane called granulosa membrane. And in between the granulosa membrane and the primary oocyte, there's a layer of glycoprotein which forms a zone called zona pellucida. This maturing primary follicle finally matures into secondary follicle. The structure of the secondary follicle is somewhat similar to maturing, uh, maturing primary follicle burst, but there's an extra thing. So there's your primary oocyte, primary oocyte. There's the zona pellucida and surrounding the primary oocyte is a membrane called granulosa membrane. The extra thing here is that within granulosa membrane, there are these small but many multiple empty spaces which is filled with a fluid and these fluid filled multiple small spaces present inside the granulosa membrane are called lacuna. Lacuna. Multiple lacunae. You might have noticed one thing. The primary follicle contains primary oocyte. However, the secondary follicle contains secondary oocyte. No, 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 no. The secondary follicle still contains primary oocyte. The primary oocyte is still arrested in the protein phase of process of meiosis II. The primary oocyte still has not completed or even started uh, the process of meiosis I from the phase where it got 
paused or arrested that is primary oocyte is still in diplotin phase so the secondary follicle contains multiple fluid filled spaces inside granulosa membrane called lacuna these lacuna they grow in size and finally merge together to form a single large fluid filled space and this single large fluid filled space is called antrum since this follicle right here contains antrum it's also called antral follicle not only that this follicle is actually a maturing secondary follicle a maturing secondary follicle because it is through this follicle that secondary follicle finally gets converted to this final follicle so maturing secondary follicle the secondary follicle is present before the antral follicle so also called pre antral follicle there's always some kind of reason behind any naming not just any naming but most of the namings okay so here's antrum there's one more extra thing outside the follicle you can see a membrane like structure which is made up of connective tissue this membrane is actually secreted by the stroma or the inner content of the ovary this membrane surrounds the antral follicle from all sides and this particular membrane is called theca folliculi theca refers to layer and folliculi cuz it's surrounding the follicle so it's called theca folliculi the theca folliculi layer contains two parts the inner part and the outer part where the inner part is called theca interna theca refers to layer and interna refers to internal and the outer part is called theca externa well theca refers to layer and externa refers to external so external layer is there anything extra yes there is so here's your primary oocyte nothing has changed there's still the zona pellucida yet nothing has changed there's still the granulosa membrane yet nothing has changed granulosa membrane however the part of the granulosa membrane that is found surrounding the part of the granulosa membrane wait let me show you this part of the granulosa membrane which is found surrounding the primary oocyte has been given a special name and that is cumulus cumulus oophericus cumulus oophericus so cumulus oophericus is the part of granulosa membrane present in antral follicle which is found surrounding the primary oocyte so what are the various features of antral follicle the antral follicle contains antrum which is a large fluid filled space there's the primary oocyte which is surrounded by zona pellucida which is a glycoprotein which is secreted by both primary oocyte and the granulosa membrane the part of the granulosa membrane which is found just surrounding the primary oocyte after the formation of antrum is called cumulus oophericus outside antral follicle there's a layer of connective tissue which is secreted by the stroma of the ovary itself and this layer is called theca folliculi where theca means layer and folliculi refers to follicle basically it's a layer uh, covering the follicle theca folliculi has two layers the internal called theca interna and the external called theca externa and that's it the secondary follicle or the antral follicle finally matures into graphian follicle let's learn about graphian follicle so this fluid filled space called antrum it increases in size as the antrum increases in size it pushes the primary oocyte to one corner and forms graphian follicle so this large fluid filled space is nothing but antrum the cells surrounding the oocyte is cumulus oophericus the part of the granulosa membrane that is found attaching the oocyte with the wall of the follicle which is present at the base 
is called discus prolegeras outside there's your theca folliculi theca folliculi anything else yeah there's your granulosa membrane obviously now the primary oocyte was arrested in the meiosis 1 division more specifically during the diplotin phase of prophase 1 of meiosis 1 division the primary oocyte here's the primary oocyte primary oocyte is actually diploid however this diploid primary oocyte needs to form a haploid egg for primary oocyte to form a haploid egg it has to go through a process of meiosis meiosis contains meiosis 1 and meiosis 2 at the end of meiosis 1 the amount of chromosome becomes half and it reduces from 2 and 2 n and this structure is called secondary oocyte along with secondary oocyte one smaller cell which also contains half the number of chromosome is formed which is called the first polar body is formed however the primary oocyte is stuck in the meiotic 1 division during the diplotin phase of prophase 1. However, once the antral follicle starts making graphene follicle, the primary oocyte due to some hormonal action activates and primary oocyte finally completes its meiosis 1 division to form what you see here, secondary oocyte and another cell which is the first polar body the first polar body is not essential it basically degenerates but what's essential is secondary oocyte because it is secondary oocyte that is responsible for the formation of egg but it is finally the graphene follicle which contains secondary oocyte all these phases all these follicles they contain primary oocyte but finally due to some hormonal action during the development of antral follicle into graphene follicle that the primary oocyte finally meiotically divides to form secondary oocyte now after the secondary oocyte has been formed or after the graphene follicle has been formed the process of ovulation takes place all these stages they are a part of follicular phase of ovarian cycle the second step of ovarian cycle is ovulation and this is ovulation during ovulation it's not the egg it's the secondary oocyte that gets ejected out of the ovary what happens to the wall the wall that contains the granulosa membrane and the theca folliculi they later die in the luteal phase which you'll come to know in the chapter of menstrual cycle but for now the secondary oocyte gets ejected out of the ovary. It's not just the secondary oocyte. Secondary oocyte also goes off with few membranes. What are the membranes? So here's the secondary oocyte. There's the polar body. Surrounding the secondary oocyte is the zona pellucida, which is made up of glycoprotein. Along with zona pellucida, few cells of granulosa membrane also get ejected out while being attached to zona pellucida these cells which also get ejected out are shaped like a crown or they cover the zona pellucida in the form of a crown at the same time radiating outwards like the radiations from a sun that is exactly why this layer is called corona radiata Corona refers to crown, since this layer looks like a crown. Radiata refers to radiation, because this crown looks like it is radiating outwards. So, Corona radiate. There's always a reason behind naming. Remember that. It's not possible to just mog up all the names that exist in biology. You gotta use your common sense as well. So, there's a layer called Corona radiata. So, this is the final structure which gets ejected out of the ovary during ovulation. What does it contain? It contains secondary oocyte and polar body, which is covered by zona pellucida. And zona pellucida also, outside zona pellucida, there's an extra layer called corona radiata. Now, we know that secondary oocyte, 
from where do we know? We know it from the first part of Ozenesis. We, which uh, the video of which is already in YouTube under my channel. Okay, we know that secondary oocyte goes through second meiosis and forms egg. This is the egg. Along with egg, it also forms a haploid second polar body. But it's not just the secondary oocyte that enters meiosis too. It's also polar body that enters meiosis too to form two other polar bodies. However, however, second, uh, not the secondary oocyte, oocytes, they like to take pauses. They like to take their plenty of rest and not waste their energy. So secondary oocyte again gets arrested during meiotic 2 division. Meiosis 2 contains prophase 2, metaphase 2, anaphase 2, telophase 2. During metaphase 2, the secondary oocyte gets arrested. So inside secondary oocyte, you can see this spindle fibers, right? Holding chromosomes from both sides. And the chromosomes are aligned in the middle at the metaphasic plate. So these chromosomes attached with spindle fibers during metaphase, they get arrested during the process of metaphase, the secondary oocyte gets arrested. And in this arrested state, the secondary oocyte enters the fallopian tube of female reproductive organ inside the fallopian tube. If the secondary oocyte does not receive any sperm, it simply degenerates. How long will it wait? It will wait for 24 to 48 hours. The secondary oocyte after reaching the fallopian tube will wait for 24 to 48 hours for its prince or the sperm. But if no prince comes to mingle with it or no sperm comes to attach with it, then it gets degenerated, destroyed and absorbed by the wall of the fallopian tube. However, however, if within the given time period, a sperm comes and the head of the sperm touches the wall of the oocyte, then the oocyte becomes excited and immediately, I mean immediately, the secondary oocyte completes its second meiosis to form an egg so that the egg, this is egg or ovum or ooted, I don't know what you want to call it, but it's very important because it is the female gamete which is formed at the very end which fertilizes the sperm to form a zygote. The egg and sperm, they finally fertilize together to form a diploid zygote. So what happened? When a sperm was detected, when the head of the sperm comes in contact with the wall of the secondary oocyte, the secondary oocyte completes its meiosis to, fo to form an egg and the second polar body. The, sec the first polar body also goes through meiosis to form two other polar bodies. So in total, there are three polar bodies and an egg. It is the egg that fuses with the sperm to form a zygote. And then the rest is history. The rest is you, you watching my video. This is how you are made. You should be thankful for the whole event taking place in nature. I don't know what I'm saying, but what I'm saying is this is how the process of woo genesis completes. And this is how you master the process of woo genesis. I'll see you again next time. Bye.